Hi there, Nathan Patrick Taylor here. In this video, I'm going to take you through using the Alterx email tool. There's a couple tips and tricks that I'm going to point out to you to help you be able to use this tool the right way the first time that you use it. We're going to be building an Alterx workflow from scratch. We're going to do it pretty quickly, but we're also going to review some of the other tools that are going to be involved in this workflow. So if you want to skip through to the very end, in the email workflow, then use the table of contents that I've posted in the description of the video. So let's jump on over to Alterx and start building. Okay, so inside Alterx, we're just going to pull in some sample data to start with. So I'm using data from the uh, data.gov website, so data.medicare.gov, so it's Medicare data. Uh, you can use whatever data you like. If you want to use data from that site, certainly go out there and download it yourself. Uh, but the actual file we're using isn't isn't super important here. So um, I'm pulling in this data. I'm going to drop another browse here just after it, and we'll run it, and I'll sort of describe to you what I'm going to try to achieve uh, once we get the email portion of it built. So the data that I have is just basically giving me a number of healthcare facilities here uh, for all the states, and uh, it also has performance measures that are based on some clinical data and I'm only going to pull one of the performance measures out. For the sake of this example all I really want to do is get an average score uh, per state and then um, display that in a table and send it out in an email. So that's that gives you a little bit of an idea of what we're trying to do here. Now the average score is a little bit misleading because we're averaging an average and we can't do that normally. So uh, just forgive me on that piece just for the sake of example. All right, so uh, I have the data here. I uh, really want to only pull in one measure and it's going to be the influenza measure and uh, one of the scores will average. So let's uh, go ahead and start building this out. One of my favorite tools to use is the auto field tool. Uh, because this data is coming from a raw CSV file, I don't know that it's formatted correctly. So we'll let it uh, auto format, auto field, and then um, once we have it done, we'll go ahead and take a look at that data once it's been uh, put into the correct field. So let's go ahead and run it again, uh, and then let's see what it came out as. So really what I'm interested in is I'm going to pull the fourth quarter score here, and I want to make sure that that is some type of numeric field. It's a double, so that's good. And then the state is a string. That's how we're going to group them. So uh, those are looking good. Now we'll go ahead and uh, to build the email, I really only want to display a table of the data. I don't want to display every single record that came through. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the Transform tab here and choose a Summarize tool and drop that in. And with this tool, we're going to take uh, the state here and we're going to add it as a grouping item in the summary and then we're going to go down and I'm going to take as my numeric field it's going to be the score as the fourth quarter since this data was uh, published in, in January. So the fourth quarter of 2017 is inside this data set. So in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it as an average uh, by the state. Um, probably change this a little bit. We'll, I'd rather have it say lowercase uh, state and then in here we'll just say uh, We'll call it average score. And maybe we'll do Q4 just to make it look halfway decent. Okay, uh, and now that I have that, what I'll do is I'll just run it one more time here and we're gonna make sure that the summary is coming out correctly or at least looks decent here. Uh, so have the states, I have the average score. I'd probably filter out uh, the null data and uh, some of that information in there if I really wanted to, but I'm not going to do that right now. We'll just leave it the way that it is. Okay, so I have the summary portion of it done. Now what I need to do is bring in the tools that I'm going to use to create the actual report or layout in the email. And to do that, I'm going to go over to the reporting tab here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the table item and we're going to drop it in right after the summary and I'm really not going to do anything else with it. I'm going to leave it selected as basic because I just want to stick out, stick the data out as the table that it already is. So that portion of it's fine. Um, and then we're going to run it again just to make sure it looks good when it comes out. 
and we'll look at the, the back end of this here. Uh, and actually, I'm going to do a browse uh, in this case because I want to be able to browse what that's going to look like at the end. And this is going to be one of the first important pieces uh, as a sort of quality check here to make sure it's coming out okay. So when I, when I browse that table, you'll see that it's just one record. If I scroll down, there's not a second one here. And in that one record is embedded the table that I have created. Now, this right here is the time to make sure that there aren't multiple records coming out of here unless you want multiple records coming out because for every person, every recipient in your email list is going to get an email multiplied by the number of records that you have. So in this case, I only want one email going to each recipient so I need only one record coming out of this particular list. You may have a use case where you want multiple records and multiple emails being sent, that's okay, um, but for here I don't. I say that because the mistake I've made using the email tool is to put out a record for every state. So if there'd be 50 records in here, that means I'm gonna be sending out 50 emails. I need to make sure it's coming out as one record when I'm done so that each person in the list just gets the one email with the table. Okay, so I think I've, I've uh, beat that horse enough here where you understand where I'm coming from. All right, um, now this is just going to produce a table. The second thing that I want to do is to put a header on this, okay? So to do that, I'm going to go over and I'm going to take a text input, and I'm going to drop that text input here. And uh, I'm going to call this, um, we'll just call it uh, input text. And then I'm going to say that this is a demo report is what I'm going to put on the uh, what's going to actually be in the text. And then the other piece I'm going to take from the reporting section here is a report text layout item. And we'll connect those two together. And then in the report text, uh, I'm going to call this field a uh, header. And we're going to hit the available drop downs, the available fields drop down here and choose input text because that's the name of the text coming in from the input tool. I'm going to bold it and I'm going to make it blue just to prove to you that it's coming through once we get ready to send the email. All right, so we have the layout components ready. Now we actually need to lay them out and I'm going to bring in a new tool or a newer tool that I really like and it's in the developer. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. It's in the laboratory section, and it's called Visual Layout. So we'll take Visual Layout, and we'll drop it in here, and we'll put both the table and the text component into the Visual Layout. And then we'll click on the Visual Layout tool, and then click Manage Layout. And the first time that you do this, you'll notice the table here is listed, but the text isn't listed here. If that happens, what we'll do is we'll just rerun the workflow again. After rerunning the workflow, if the item doesn't show up inside the visual layout tool, you may have to delete the line connecting to it and reconnect it again, or change the field name and inside the uh, create new field text for that particular workflow. I don't know if that's a bug with the tool right now. I know it's in, in the laboratory section, so it could be something that's not causing that particular text element to come over. Okay, now if I go back and look at it, I'll see both the table and the text item there. So what we'll do is we'll go to the table and basically just drag it onto the canvas here. And the table shows up the way that I would expect it to show up. And then the text input, you'll see that these green areas here are where I can drop it. And we're just going to put it on the top there. It's just a placeholder now as input text, but it will say demo report when the actual email gets generated. So all of those all of those two components are on there. They're looking good. Uh, now what we'll do is we'll do one more browse on the end of this just so I can actually see what it's going to look like when it generates. And this really becomes my, my second checkpoint here uh, to make sure that I'm only spitting out one record for this particular set. Uh, and here we look at it again, and you'll see that it's only putting out one item. The other thing I want to check inside the browse is to make sure that the names and everything are lining up as well and the title is coming through. So that all looks good. So my second check here, only one record is being generated. Okay, now we can go ahead and bring in our uh, reporting tool here and drop in our or bring in our email tool from the reporting section. So let's go ahead and drop that in. and. Uh, 
go through a couple of what a couple of things that are important inside the email tool. So uh, I, I got to believe a vast majority of you are going to run into the problem that I had with auto detecting the SMTP server or SMTP uh, email server for the for the tool. Uh, we're a Microsoft shop. We use Office 365. So auto detecting this uh, did not work for me. Um, I had to uncheck it, and then in here I had to place a SMTP relay server that is inside our on-premise network that relays emails on behalf of a of another account that we've set up. So at this point, to get it to work uh, on a corporate level, if you're using Outlook 365, I had to get our IT folks to set up a, a server relay for us and and basically a uh, a dummy email account or a service account email that we could use to process the email. So um, if you don't have that problem and it works fine for you, then great. But that's that's what I had to do to get it to work on our end. Uh, thankfully, that didn't take too long to get set up. Uh, and then you can place the emails, uh, email addresses of the recipients for this particular piece of data. Uh, it also has a use field function here where you could feed it the list of recipients if you want to, which I imagine most of us would probably want to use that particular feature. Uh, I imagine a workflow where you could be sending out different emails to different people and it's formatted uh, in a different way and um, depending on what they're supposed to see and, and a little bit of data, data governance in there. So that works as well. Another nice uh, feature of it is the ability to add an attachment. So in a, in a full-blown workflow that I have, I have a separate process that creates a PDF file and attaches it to the email before it gets sent. So that's another option that you have uh, using this email tool as well. So for, uh, in the body of the email then, what we're getting past from this layout tool here is a field that contains what we've actually visually laid out before. And that's all we're going to say is, I wanna use this field rather than hand type anything in here. I'm just gonna use that layout tool. And that's what people are gonna see when it gets generated. Uh, one other comment that I've had is the, the the reproduction of the layout, the visual layout that we saw, uh, worked really well on iPhones, iPads, Apple devices. It was very hit and miss with Android devices. Some users complained that the, the text wasn't even visible. Others said it was not laid out correctly. Uh, so that's why I went down the road of attaching the PDF file to it, uh, because the PDF actually rendered immediately on some of the Android devices. So those are the types of things you'll have to play with and test once you get it out there into the environment and see how people are using it. All right, that's it for this particular video. Drop a like if you liked it. If you have any comments, questions, anything else I can go over, then let me know in the comment section. Thanks.